Horseport Ireland governs the, the non-thoroughbred horses, and uh, I'm the non-executive chairman. The chief executive who runs it is uh, Damien MacDonald. Uh, we have uh, 28 affiliates, and we cover all the horses, a whole spectrum of horses. We have a very, very broad church, from uh, riding ponies for children to, to cobs for riding schools to quiet horses for, for amateur amateurs, for more advanced horses, for semi-professionals, for horses for a Huntsville. So we have uh, 28 different affiliates, all the way up to people who are competitive event riders and uh, show jumping riders, competitive amateurs and the elite professionals. So um, the industry is worth 705 million. There's about 50,000 participants. And so it's a, a huge industry in Ireland. And as uh, the other speaker said, there's something about the Irish psychic that we're actually, the horse has a special place. There's very few people in Ireland that aren't fond of a horse. And it's one of the few uh, sports uh, that there's every walk of life in it. You know, uh, you could meet a millionaire or you could meet a pauper and they'd argue which horse was the best. Everyone thinks their horse is the one. Uh, it's a great industry to be involved in because it's full of optimists. Uh, some people say it's full of dreamers. I sometimes say there's a lot of people hallucinating. They're more than dreaming. Uh, so the, the, you wouldn't want to underestimate the social capital that's derived from the sports horse sector in Ireland. People sometimes argue with me that we're not making a lot of money. And I always say, well, what about the value and the enjoyment and the pleasure? What do you put on that? Like, you know? And so uh, the amount of families that go every weekend. Every weekend in Ireland, you see horse boxes going everywhere. And there's all kinds of events, and even if I'm going to a, a Jim Canna jumping 90 centimetres, I think I'm James Kiernan, you know. And so they, uh, everyone is having a bit of fun. Keeps, it's something that fathers can do with their daughters. Mostly, you, the amount of fathers that are driving the trucks for their teenage daughters. Most teenage daughters don't want their dads near them at all. But if you're in the horse business, they want them to bring them and drive them and pay for everything as well. <laughs> so uh, there's a huge lot of uh, uh, social capital and fun and enjoyment. And that's, you cannot underestimate that because currently reality is very tough for a lot of people in Ireland, and so anything that distracts you from reality has to be a good thing. And uh, so the pleasure that people get out of it. Uh, the uh, amount of centres that we have in Ireland that are good, we have some phenomenal centres for sports horses in Ireland, like Cavan Equestrian Centre is uh, probably one of the foremost centres in the European Union. Uh, we have uh, Mill Street, uh, it's down in, in County Cork, phenomenal centre, now they're building a phenomenal cross-country course down there to add to it. And we have the centre of all centres in, in the RDS in Dublin. And for the Chinese here, like if you're here in August, the first week in August, it's a very special week. We have this show, it's fantastic. And everybody in Ireland knows about the Nations Cup that occurs during that show, the Aga Khan Trophy. And if you ask somebody anywhere in Ireland, do you know anything about the Aga Khan Trophy? They don't think of John Ox's horses, they think of the Aga Khan. And uh, James Kernan, who's here, is one of our top riders, or he was one of our top riders. He won it three years in a row. And I'd say he was a household name. I remember little kids running around the garden pretending they were James Kernan, riding a, 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 a brush, <laughs> jumping jumps. Like, and so like, they, they, they were, uh, uh, in fact, actually, Nick, I'd swap all my qualifications to be able to say I rode in three consecutive Aga Khan winning teams. <laughs> I'd be a foot taller. <laughs> uh, coaches, we've world-class coaches in Ireland. We've world-class coaches in Ireland. We're really, really lucky that, uh, uh, and the fruits of our, uh, uh, the labours of those coaches are not only the international riders that they train, but the young riders in Ireland. Last year, we won seven, uh, championship medals in Europe in both eventing and show jumping and uh, there's uh, Irish riders that are in every uh, continent and so there was a time we'd have it hard to do to field a, a Nations Cup team but now we could field a Nations Cup team from the Irish riders based in, in, in America, from the domestic riders, from the riders based in the UK and from the riders based in mainland Europe and even in the UAE we have a team of riders so it's uh, whatever about breeding horses we can definitely breed riders. Uh, for, uh, it's great to be here with the thoroughbred sector because there's actually huge synergy between the, the sports horse and the thoroughbreds. And so, uh, like all the ingredients that John highlighted, the limestone land, the grass, and that for breeding thoroughbreds and the expertise and the competencies that you need to produce top quality uh, foals and yearlings and, and young horses, they're the same whether the horse is a thoroughbred or a sports horse. Many of the riders from the uh, uh, both National Hunt and Flat Riders, they actually came through our ranks in the pony clubs and the horses, and so we're actually, the, uh, they serve their apprenticeships with us. Many of the owners got into horses through their kids being fond of horses or through them th themselves riding in horses, so they, that's where their interests grow. And so there's a, there's a huge uh, synergy. We don't capitalize on it nearly enough uh, in that uh, lots of uh, people who are interested in horses are interested in both types of horses. Uh, the opportunities for Ireland and China are huge, huge. 
And so some of our coaches and some of our centers have uh, uh, summer courses where the people come from China and the kids can learn English in the morning and ride horses in the afternoon. And this is a great initiative because people come to Ireland, firstly, they get a Western experience, they get used to Ireland, and they actually uh, have their umbilical cord tied to Ireland, and they'll remember us. Because, you know, uh, China is a huge country, 1.3 billion people. We're only a little blip, 4.5 million. We're not even a village in China. Uh, the other thing, uh, uh, you know, there's a huge opportunity for us to build strong links with China. All the different kinds of sports horses that we have, you hear people talking about trying to export elite horses. But before people can ride an elite horse, they need to learn to ride on a pony, or they learn to r ride as an amateur. And only a small number of people will be elite riders. But the hobby market is huge, and we have, we have horses uh, with a very forgiving temperament. Uh, you don't have to be an elite rider to ride some of our horses. The horses will do 95% of the work for you. And so there's a market for those with uh, high social network individuals. Uh, Michael Connolly in Red Mills has actually opened up the market for Red Mills in China. But Michael has another idea, uh, which is to bring uh, Chinese people to Ireland to learn about horse husbandry. because. In many places in China, there isn't a tradition of looking after horses, and so we have that tradition. So the idea that someone would come to Ireland, uh, spend six weeks maybe in, in a college and learn the basics of husbandry, and then be placed in an equestrian centre or with a racehorse trainer uh, and learn the basics of horse husbandry, so they'd go back as an expert, but they'd also have, as I say, they'd be tied to Ireland. Uh, they'd, have, they'd look at it as their alma mater here. So that's a, a, a very promising initiative that Michael is developing, and. and it's something that we can uh, build bridges with, with China. And so China has a very embryonic horse industry at the moment, but the opportunity for us, because we're small, to be, uh, 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 collaborate with them and cooperate with them. So I, I'd be very optimistic that in the future we can grow uh, with our, our Chinese partners and grow a sector both for the sports horse sector and the thoroughbred sector. So I wish all the Chinese a happy new year.